Maybe, maybe you should go and do some contemplating. Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hi, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is Rose Buddies. It's America's top podcast about Canada's top kissing show, The Bachelorette Canada. Oh boy, I just, I haven't talked to you about this before, but I know a lot of people watch this show for different reasons. Some people just like the drama, and to that I say save it for Obama. A lot of people like um, the love. I just like watching people smooch and kiss red hot pecs all day long. You know what I mean? I mean, then why, why this show? Why not? It's it's got the most uh, KPM. You think? Oh, defo. Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, I like the OC, and there's a lot of there's some teen packs that happen in that one. But I mean, if you're talking about your KPM, like this is pretty much as good as it gets. The movie as good as it gets, disappointingly low KPM. <laughs> You would think. I would thought I, I was getting psyched out of my mind. Were Helen, you like Helen Jack Hunt, Nicholson? Ja- Jack Jacko? Hey, kiss me. Hey. Greg Kinnear? Greg Kinnear. I thought Greg and, and Jack might get a smooch or two on. No smooches between the two of those characters. Wasn't it nice how I just didn't acknowledge your Jack Nicholson impression? My flawless Jack Nicholson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe you got so confused like you thought he was in the room with you. Hey, it's me. Give me a kiss, Greg Kinnear. Hey. Helen Hunt, I'm gonna smooch ya. It's me, Jacko. That's... It's just, baby, look at look at me. Don't. Okay. It's, ju- it's just me. Don't be scared. <laughs> I didn't transform into Jack Nicholas. I'm still Griffin. We gotta record a podcast. You episode. just said Jack Nicholas. He's both men. <laughs> Listen, I had a whole bottle of champagne tonight. No, it's a little bottle. Somehow, like... Griffin and I have acquired. <laughs> multiple miniature bottles of champagne i like it i feel so accomplished and also like king kong (laughs) i love it um we watched the bachelorette canada we're on like i don't know fuck dude fifth or sixth or seventh episode i think it's the sixth okay there's only eight boys left which is not very many boys although god i love i like a lot of stuff about this season i love how breezy it is easy breezy beautiful cover girl yeah i mean that's definitely going quickly like, well, we started with less, but then they would send a substantial amount home week no. to week. This was the first week where it was just one that a went A single home. send home, yeah. Yeah. All the cruft is gone, though. I like it. We got to we got to the, the, the heart of this artichoke so quickly. What it, cruft? What does cruft mean? Cruft is like, you know, um, a lot of just unnecessary stuff. A lot of chaff. Mm, see, I know chaff. Mm-hmm. Cruft might be one of those imaginary words. Like Scrowdy Row? No, Cruft is... I, other people say that. Scrowdy Row, I think, is only said by the immediate nuclear family of the McElroys. When uh, Griffin and I first started dating, he had a lot of folksy idioms that I wasn't familiar with. Yeah. And at one point, he said Scrowdy Row, and I was like, I don't think that's a thing. And I Googled it, and the only thing that came up was an uh, article... Joystick post? <laughs> yeah, or? an article written by Justin McElroy. <laughs> It's good, though. You can use it at home. It just means, like, you know, um, kind of shoddy. Like grungy? Grungy or just or usually just, like, sort of shoddy, shoddily made, just sort of scrowdy row. It could be grungy. Just means bad, I guess. Huh. Not not optimal. Suboptimal. Scrowdy row. I like it a lot. It's really good. Um, let's talk about what happened in this episode of the television show. Okay. Because I gotta know what I... Since we recorded last week, you know what I did? I just went in the bedroom... And I just laid perfectly still in bed for seven fucking days because <laughs> I couldn't do anything without thinking about how this drama with Chris and Drew is going to be resolved. Oh, yeah, please. Please, let's explore that more this episode. Oh, God. I was just so rock hard for it. I, well, I just lying in bed seven days rock hard I just thinking like about it. it. I don't like bringing that to the podcast. I don't like bringing it either. That's why we need to find the release in this episode. Oh. of Fro- that, was, uh, that was bad. Yeah. I can tell by your face that that was... A bad thing. Yeah. There were a lot of sounds this episode. And, Y'all. And that made me uncomfortable. And I'm still, I think, a little bit fragile. A little gun shy. I mean, there was there were sounds. There were also plenty of asides. There were plenty of <laughs> things. At least three of my And the senses. music. The and music, too. the music. Too. Fuck. A lot of, yeah. Oh, mm. the music. We have a special. I need to get my phone. Because we have to play you. We recorded oh, yeah, we something. have an audio clip. Yeah, we recorded something that happened during the episode that was 
It was unbearable. Let's get into it, though. Okay. Uh, we're still in Quebec City. Looks balling, by the way. The hotel they're staying in looks sick as hell. Yeah, it seems like a really nice getaway. Basically, everywhere they go looks like really, really great. Mm-hmm. Gotta get up to Quebec City. Or just, you know, more time in Canada. Yeah. Uh, so, we see the guys all sitting around. Uh, they all have their McCafés. Just sit, just doing a little, little chit chats. Uh, Benoit, just an update. Benoit still rocking the hat and glasses. That's just fine. Just in cash times. I mean, this if it, for all we know, this is the same day. You know. No, that doesn't I don't make think sense. So. No, he yeah. just decided that's a good look. There's just the maybe there's some sort of like virus going around, and when it catches you, mm-hmm. you just grow a pair of glasses. Sprout and a hat. glasses. Yeah. Um. So Noah arrives. Okay, I watch this shit like a hawk. Yeah. Here's the interaction. Noah walks in. Hey, guys. Noah. Noah. Well, this week's going to be buck wild. Blah, 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 blah. Here's your date card. I'll leave you to it. He walks out of the room. Thanks, Noah. <laughs> Never any, like, how are you guys doing, to which they would respond. You guys, feel, you guys feeling good? Yeah. Nope. You guys enjoying those McCafes? Fucking of course we are. They're delicious. <laughs> uh, no, none of that. Nothing. So again, yes, they did say, hey, Noah, and bye, Noah. They could have just been referring <laughs> to the date card the floating in and, and, and the door closing. opening and closing. Now, let's talk about the ramifications of this, because one thing I didn't consider, you and I can definitely fucking see him. Uh-huh. You and I can definitely see him. I'm assuming the other people listening to this podcast can see Noah. Yeah. How? How is that possible? Is they it just add him in later in post. <laughs> I can't believe you hadn't thought of that. <laughs> it's, it's just a, that's a CGI skin. It could be fucking anybody. They could they could flip a switch and then Shrek walks in. Hey guys, hey guys, Shrek, Shrek. <laughs> Thanks, Shrek. F- man, that's really really good. Um, By the way, Noah, uh, a lot of people have been tweeting our show at you, and you've been retweeting us. I don't know if you are a listener. I hope you take it in jest. Again, you're doing a fine job. It's just they're not, much like Chris Harrison, they are, like, just not giving you much to do. We know so little about you, Noah. I know. I know. And we want to know more. I want to know more, of course. He has, he's on, like, a food show where he eats things. See, I'm interested in this. Yeah. Do people interact with him in the food show? <laughs> we have to watch like, that, well, too. Like, weird. The food is floating, <laughs> and it's getting chewed up, and it just fell to the floor. What? Hi, Noah. Hi, Noah. Eat my food. <laughs> okay. Um, the date card reveals that Mike gets the solo date. My boy, Mike. Yeah. Sweet Mike. We have to talk about this, because we'll forget about it. There's an after scene. The after scene is all these boys. It was probably shot. Oh, the in this blooper, same, like the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was probably shot in this same sequence because they were all sitting around as the same guys. And Mike does this thing with his mouth, where he like makes a like kind of like a whistle noise that as- ascends and descends, and he like rakes each of his individual fingers across his mouth, and it makes the most wonderful like arpeggio noise. I thought it was kind of like a like a. It was kind of like, a, kind of like that noise, except he did it with all of his fingers really quickly. So it was like. I can't do it. There's no way the mic can't picked that do up. It. Yeah, because I can't do it. Mike did it, and it was amazing, Mike. Yeah. Uh, so they... It was also funny because all the boys then tried to do it, and he was like, if there's a direct feed camera in here, like Jasmine <laughs> watching all of us, she's like, I'm sending all these boys home. Mike also, so, and this this may just be because he's Canadian and very fair and blonde, but Mike gave me a very Mike Nelson from Mystery Science it, Theater vibe. Yeah, it could also be that his name's Mike. Yeah. A but lot of connective tissue. I think there. there's there's something there. I don't think Mike Nelson... I love MST3K. That was like my favorite show growing up. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was as fucking jacked up no, as, that's fair. as this Mike is. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, so they meet... Mike and Jasmine meet in a like a bay of helicopters. Uh, it's kind of like a like a helicopter pound where all the helicopters <laughs> are just Won't waiting. to adopt a helicopter? Oh, waiting to be rowdy, adopted. He's a rowdy helicopter. Is he out of shots? <laughs> Why didn't Mikhail get this date? Why didn't he get to go? We to the- want so desperately for him to take her on a private tour of how a helicopter works. Or they're in the sky. You know, they're making really awkward small talk. Oh, look, it's a road. 
And then what's wrong? Oh, no, the helicopter. Something's gone wrong. Something's not responding. Fucking Mikhail hangs out the door of the plane, fixes the helicopter. Oh, man. Like Mission Impossible like style? Like Mission Impossible. Except That'd it's be possible. Good. Because, oh, my God. But there's a screw missing, and it's an important screw. Fucking Mikhail reaches into his shirt, rips out his little stud, jams it in oh, the screw the hole to ring. save the sh- it's like signs. It's like the end of signs. There's a reason for that nipple. There's a reason for that nipple garnish. Is this like a an adult version of signs that you saw? Yes. <laughs> and it's, it had to do with a fit suitor's nipple. And it was great. It was a great movie. Okay. Um, so... Jasmine is surprised that Mike has never been in a helicopter before. <laughs> Like, yo, Jazz, <laughs> have you been in a helicopter before? No. I have not either. This is, it's insane. It's an insane thing to Maybe think. Maybe it's more common in Canada. Why? I don't know. But she just seemed to be like, oh, I bet you've been in one before. And he's like, no, I just dress like a guy that's been in a helicopter before. <laughs> what is that? Okay, I actually do know what that means. Um, But yeah, so anyway, so they get in a helicopter. Um, the, the helicopters per episode, the HPE of this short season of the bachelorette is insane y'all is this the third helicopter i think it might be the fourth but it, out of six episodes that's <laughs> yeah. but like that's a running joke for the rest of the series and sure there's a lot of bachelor there's there's a lot of helicopters in bachelor and bachelorette but like my god y'all it's like every other date has a has a h copter in it um so she tells us that she's really attracted to the fact that he helps people for a living as a reminder he is a firefighter slash paramedic but she's also attracted to the fact that he's got a dozen donuts under that there shirt that's a that's a weird way to describe an eight pack he's got eight donuts under that shirt just eight little circular eight big fat sausages under that shirt that's what abs look like i bet <laughs> Um, and so they start making out in the helicopter and Mike, Mike is really cute in the retelling of this. He's like, you know, I just started kind of kissing her. There was a lot of artifice for the acquisition of physical contact with jazz this week. Um, well, cause there's a lot of dudes that haven't really put the moves on yes and there were varying degrees of success yeah but no varying degrees of discomfort because each one made me pretty uncomfortable yeah. uh they get off the helicopter they're they're walking around some kind of boardwalk area and they have an umbrella they're very cute together um, i like them so much please get married and then <laughs> and then there's a a group date card that arrives um, and the group date, the little quotation on the card is, are you strong enough to be my man? Is this the one that Thomas finds? Yeah. Thomas walks in. Just break down the bit. Thomas just walks into the room. Everybody looks at him for like a second. Nothing happens. And he reaches into his back pocket. Oh, look what I just happened to find. Great. Not. Not. Uh, th- I'll give it. A, I'll give this bit. Because there has to be a fucking bit. There has for to be each. a bit. I'll give it a. I'll give it a four out of ten. Definitely not the worst one that we've seen so far. True. But a little rote. What here? Hey, I got a group date. Uh, here's who's on. Uh, we're gonna rub each other. It's for Chris. It, it's literally that easy. <laughs> It is not that hard to walk into a room and read a piece of information. Hey, I just did a little, uh, oops, I fell down with the, I dropped the group date. Just read it. You know who should have, who should have delivered one of those date cards? Who? Is Chris. And then he could have burst into flames yeah, after that would he be read really, it. Really that would have been great. Yeah, because you know he had that backup bomb. <laughs> and he had a plan. <laughs> um... So on the group date is Chris, Kevin, P, Mikkel, and Thomas. And um, because strength is mentioned in the card, immediately Captain Canada starts kind of shit talking because all the guys on this date are a little bit scrawny compared to the He's others. He's not wrong, though. Yeah. And I, there's a good, um, 
like game design balance thing going on. Because if it was like Captain Canada versus the the indoor kids, it would yeah. it would have been a bloodbath. Yeah, no, she kind of mixed it up and gave the muscle guys a less muscular date and a the, way, 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 way better date than this. The quote intellectual guys yeah. a more muscular date. Uh, so we go back to the date with Mike, and Mike and Jasmine are now inside on a couch, and there are drinks and dessert items. We got a commercial. Oh God, yeah, we have to talk. There's just so much. There's so much bit happening because Mike walks in and sees these candies laying on the floor, and I, uh, not on the floor on the table. And it's the most innocuous thing, but it just drove me crazy as a thing that somebody said while shooting a TV show that like an editor saw and was like, "Hmm, that's gonna stay in." And he just walks in and he points to these sweets at the table and he just says, "Sweet tooth." <laughs> <laughs> and it made me laugh so hard because it's like. Why, thank you, Mike. <laughs> mm, sweet tooth. Who does? Wait. Are you saying one of us has a sweet tooth? Or are you saying that you want to eat that because you have a sweet tooth? Are you saying whoever put that there has a sweet tooth? Is it by a candy company called Sweet Tooth? Mm, sweet tooth. Mm, candy candy party. Mm, dessert time. Okay. Okay. You're not wrong. It's just. I know. It's like it's like walking into a room with a carpet and pointing at it and being like, "Oh, red." Hmm. It's a big, big rug. No, that's a carpet. <laughs> There's no stains on that. Okay, why would you? Why would you need me to? Hmm. You know these guys. They're that's not wood. Okay, okay. They're just figuring out how to pass the time on this television program. Hmm. You know, sweet tooth. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Mike. I am going to say that now. Just to my wife anytime I see a dessert anywhere. <laughs> mm, sweet tooth. Uh, the thing that disappoints me about these scenes, and this is true of every every series throughout the world, is they just leave so much food on the table. Rachel mentioned if you and I were on this show, we would just be eating all the time. And it's like, <laughs> yes. I wouldn't even stop to say sweet tooth. We would walk in and be like, oh, this is nice. You'd be like, yeah, it sure is. Hold on. <laughs> It's just the the desserts. That's what hurts me the most. On the on the horrible, horrible French kiss date that Benoit went on, they yeah. left like a whole pile of macarons. Oh, are I you know. kidding me? I would have straight up turned like if my... If it's a big plate of like steak and potatoes, yeah. I could see myself thinking, you know what? It's a date. I don't want to be like chewing on this like tough meat. But a macaron, you're in, you're out. Yeah. They're they're bright they're bite size. They're bite size. Macaron is French for the good bite. <laughs> uh, anyway, sweet tooth. Anyway, sweet tooth. Uh, and then this is where the dramatic music starts. So Mike lives in Winnipeg. Oh, we also got a commercial cut of this like cliffhanger before going to the commercial break, and it made it seem like the end of the world. Yeah. So Mike lives in Winnipeg, and he wants to stay in Winnipeg at least for a while. And so Jasmine asks him whether he wants to stay in Winnipeg forever. And he says, no, not forever. And then there's dramatic music. And Mike is saying to us, the viewer, but I do kind of want to stay in Winnipeg. <laughs> That's where my career is. Which, like, he's a firefighter paramedic. Couldn't That's do a weird that thing, anywhere? actually. They only have fire in Winnipeg. Oh. You know how there's never been a fire in Austin or America? Yeah, that's true. The Great Chicago Fire actually spread down from Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Yeah. And that was the only one. Yeah, he's got real job security there. Yeah. Uh, but it, I mean, it's also extremely dangerous. <laughs> and so he gets nervous and decides that he's going to ask her where she might want to live. And she says, well, probably not in Winnipeg. And then there's more dramatic music, and we're and we're just like, oh no! And Mike tells the camera, like, oh, that's a deal breaker. That's game, game over. That's game over, man. And then she's like, but I do like the idea of being closer to home. He's like, oh, music to my ears. <laughs> it was the it was the fastest like establishing of conflict, and then Brazil, like, no joke, gang. Four seconds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think I want to live in Winnipeg. That's it, man. That's a deal breaker. Game over. And that's where the commercial cut was. And then, but you know, maybe Winnipeg. Whew. Thank God. Happy music. <laughs> Sweet tooth. Sweet tooth. 
and so then after we've settled from that dramatic moment, there's some dancing to be done in front of a fireplace. And what we get is a woman singing a romantic song, one woman, one guitar player, Mm. Pro- approximately two feet from them. Not even that, dude. Eighteen inches tops. <laughs> and and, and it, I've I've come to grips with the fact that there are going to be uncomfortable interactions with musicians that you don't know on this TV show. We have to. There has to be a legal minimum distance. It has to be like we have to get these fools at least. Well, and it's not even like one of those concerts where there's a stage separating them, or they're in like a big open space they are in a room so i don't fuck with like tex-mex restaurants where a mariachi band comes to your table <laughs> don't get me wrong I've, it's beautiful it's wonderful beautiful music when we where were we? we were down in san antonio um and there's like some like historic village part of the river walk where we saw a band i was like oh this is tight if i'm just trying to eat I don't want to be within touching distance of a group of musicians who are playing music for me and it's really just like it's that's all me. It's all a social discomfort thing. Even if you're really good, even if you're, you know, staying. Well, it's it's I think it's because you become acutely aware of your responsibility to the performer. Ooh, nice. Good chord. Yeah. Ooh, sweet tooth. Like you don't want to pretend like they're not there. Um, but it seems like that's the only way to do it if you're going to do anything else. Because to do it too much, to do that would make them uncomfortable, I feel like. Even if it was Sting playing you and I a romantic song within touching distance at our dinner table, if I looked at him the whole time, I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Fields of Barley? Mm, yes. Good shit, bro. Oh, nice. He's going to do it. Oh, back to the chorus. So good. Thank you, Sting. <laughs> that would suck for everybody involved. But to ignore him is a dick. Like, there's just no right way to eat a Reese's. Wow, you really went all over the place on that one. I'm pretty drunk. I had a whole bottle of champagne <laughs> just by myself. Uh, so she gives him a rose. And they dance. And it's awful. Well, they have a good time. They have a good time, but you sh- don't stand that close to me. Another Sting song. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's what that song's about. Is it at the first don't police, stand the that first close concert, to me? Is that what you said? The first police concert. <laughs> Somebody was, like, standing right in Sting's face while he was singing. And he was like, mm, don't stand so close to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that is how the song goes. Yeah. Don't stand so close to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But please back up, back up, back up. And <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> a lot of people think that's about, like, a teacher having a... No. It's about Sting. Standing too close to you. It's very literal. All the songs are so literal. <laughs> Fields of Barley. Yeah, he just likes barley fields, I guess. I don't know. I always thought it was called Fields of Gold. It might be Fields of Gold. It seems like a more compelling title. This has nothing to do with the subject of The Bachelor at all. We went on a little police quest, and I had a fun... Oh, that's a fun game. You ever play Police Quest? (laughs) You're acting as if we've never been on a tangent before together. Not this deep. We've been on this deep, deep tangent, this deep, deep sting tangent. Okay, another group date. The group date, and I wrote this down. I wanted us to practice our French a little. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do this with you. It's at the uh, Au Chalet en Boiron. That sounded really good. Um, and this location is a very rustic area. Very e- Nima Colon esque. I uh-huh. would say everybody's wearing red and black flannel. Like every single inch every of that person. place yeah. is red and black flannel. Flannel. Um, and it's going to be a circuit of strongmen competition. Jasmine gives this spiel about how the card was about, I want to see who's strong or whatever. She's like, you know, it's not just about physical strength. I want somebody who's going to want to stand by me and just weather the storm. Somebody who can be dependable, strong in spirit. But anyway, you're going to run around throwing logs around and cutting <laughs> it like, okay. It's Chris, Kevin, McCall, and Thomas, and they are told they are going to lift a heavy log and carry it. Uh, chop a log, and then pound some nails into a log. They are told this by a really rough post-production VO yeah, sesh that was by so Jasmine. Weird. That sounded like it was recorded over Skype or something, where she's like, and now the boys are going to... <laughs> uh, so the picking up the log... I mean, do we need to play-by-play? Play? The boys picked up logs and threw them. Uh, yeah, I will say, Kevin and Mikel have a real hard time picking up this log. Um... 
Thomas and Chris do significantly better. Thomas, Thomas, this is this is one of my favorite tropes on reality television is when somebody kind of reintroduces what your assumption of them might be. And so Thomas says, when people look at me, they just think I'm an international model. There's like a shitty thing to say. People look at me and they just think, oh, well, he's a model. Okay. No, an international an model. International, that man looks that man looks like a Canadian model. Oh, wow, <laughs> fuck you, buddy. I've been to Spain. Uh this is this is when Chris begins his kind of his beast run, uh where every single challenge he goes through as if the He's Jack Bauer trying yeah, to Yeah, like he's diffusing a bomb yeah. or the forest is on fire. Uh the next challenge is the axe splitting one, which a couple of the boys just like whew. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, Kevin continues. This is deckhand Kevin continues to have issues throughout. Nobody has bigger issues with the log than Chris, though, who gets his axe wedged in it and then like slams the whole log into another log. And everybody's like, damn, Chris. Yeah. Uh, calm he, it down. He brings an energy that starts to. A manic energy. Become a little uncomfortable. Uh, and so then there's the hammer and the nail. And you think that would be kind of like a breeze. But, but these are some railroad spikes, like driving yeah. those into a, a log. And everybody really hates it. Yeah. But Thomas really excels in this section. Uh, and he reminds us that he was, quote, born and raised on a construction site. He didn't remind me of anything. I did not know that about him. And he may have said it, but I have a lot of stuff Remember going on right now. Remember Thomas, first date. I just here's the problem. I look at Thomas and I just think that man's an international model. He's never worked at a construction site. <laughs> First date. Remember, he decides to model after he injures himself on the construction site. I actually forgot about that because I live a whole life outside of. Are you saying that I don't? Mm, that's not what exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying I think you probably hold thomas in higher regard than or maybe I, do. I just have a phenomenal memory from all this note taking i also have a dookie memory no okay so thomas wins which means that he gets extra time with jasmine and they go on a little horse carriage ride and they have red and black flannel blankets in keeping with the red and black flannel theme and um after the carriage ride they go to a cabin with a fireplace to have some wine together. And a big table full of sweets. Uh, this is where I'm going to need you to get oh, your God. audio. Hold on. Um, before you play the audio, I did want to say that this is where Thomas introduced us to Tom. Oh, Tom. I love Tom. Because Jasmine talks about how he's real intense. And she says, you know, you just seem really serious. And he's like, oh, well, it's weird because back home I was known as Tom. You know, and now I'm Thomas, but Tom was a wild party guy. Tom's still here somewhere. And he would, quote, dance until the music shuts off. Uh, so, you know, we got we got some layers there of Tom and Thomas. He just talks about, you know, I'm very just silly and... Um, yeah, I've, I've got a goofy side for sure. And they both talk about their weird sides together. And this, like any time anybody's talking about how weird they are, is fucking intolerable. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so just then, really random and then he talks about how he likes to do karaoke and then she kind of says oh you know what are you saying um and, and he then, says you want me to sing she says yes and then he sings an original piece he this, picks up a, he sings into a wine bottle he picks up a wine bottle yes. as a microphone this is he sings an original song this is infuriating she asked you what karaoke song you sing if you sing this at a karaoke bar that i was at i would light a fire and burn the building down with both of us inside well of it. what would you sing it to there would be no music because it's an original song yeah exactly <laughs> that's exactly my point uh this is ladies and gentlemen we have the audio cue here uh the song of thomas it's gonna hop in tonight's the big night it will be the start of something great <laughs> A story about true love and a story about believing in faith, baby. Oh, I'm shocked that Thomas is actually singing to me right now in this room. It's a rush to get to know you, let you know it's not a race. 
I wrote songs of plane to put a smile on your face. <laughs> He's kind of nervous, but he just does it anyways. And I think that's awesome. I flew half a way around this world, girl. So, <laughs> no tea, no shade. You put yourself out there, bro. You did your best. It's just such a move. It's a whole lot of move. Obviously, she likes original songs being performed <sighs> for her. It's a, it's, a, it's a surefire strategy, and it's worked for a few other boys before, and she seemed to enjoy this song as well. As a viewer at home, it was a bummer, only also because... They put music underneath <laughs> it that was not the music of the song. What do you what do you want to bet that David, the actual musician, who brought in like a like an actual string small quartet and composed a song on his guitar? Saw this and was like Saw this and was like I don't know anything anymore. I don't know. I don't I don't know. Anyway, it was it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. It was it, here's what's great. It was not even the most uncomfortable thing that happened in this episode, not even by a long shot. Well, and then after it was over, they kind of they toasted to their weird sides as if that was Thomas saying, "Look at me. I'm a big old weirdo." That's the pro- I'll watch a person sing their original songs all day. When you start talking about like I'm just really subversive. And weird, and... Did you get the last part of the song after he gets the rose? Oh, yeah. So he does get the rose. And after he gets the rose, we get a private performance as the viewer. What's great about this clip is you can actually hear Rachel making fun of something that they just said at the beginning of it. <laughs> I got the rose. you see is rose. It's from Jasmine. I'm in hell. <laughs> oh, that's a bit where I yelled about being in hell at the end of it. Uh, anyway, that was their date. It was challenging stuff. Yeah, this reminds me of when I went with my friend um, Cat Door, listener of the show, to I, go I can't. to go see the Spice Girls movie, and we thought, "Oh, this is going to be so funny and easy to make fun of. It's going to be so bad." And then it was just so uncomfortable that it like. What are you talking about? I'm saying that. I I'm saying that movie's that movie's not bad. Oh, I don't think it's very good. Uh, Spice World's a fun movie. What I'm saying is it's hard to make jokes about what happened with Thomas because it was so uncomfortable. Okay, that's fair. And in that way, it was like Spice World for me. Spice World was a fine movie. You're out of your mind. Okay, it's time for another group date. The, this one the okay. group date is benoit kevin and drew i forget who introduces it but i'm sure they did benoit something. does okay does he do something stupid i mean he's just benoit <laughs> okay that's mean <laughs> well no he just he comes in kind of whimsical and and says whimsical things mm -hmm. but it's not like a bit as much as it's just him. he lays down he does the worm on top of the date card <laughs> <laughs> he leads everybody in the chicken dance and then he reads it uh, so they are meeting her at a spa and Benoit says, she's so sexy. You can see those forms well, it, because she was wearing, she was just wearing shirt and <laughs> pant. Well, in the forms, plural. What does I, that mean? I don't know what that means. It's Benoit. He's wacky. He's whimsical. That's okay. You can see your <laughs> form. That doesn't sound like you're whimsical. It sounds something that like a super duper duper horny 14 year old that like doesn't even know the right things to say about the things he's horny about. <laughs> I love her shapes and forms. <laughs> what? She has a softness and it makes me feel hard. Really great <laughs> mounds. What? There's dampness. In her <laughs> heat. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, they're all going to be performing treatments on her, spa treatments, and she will, not know, <laughs> she will not know which man is doing what treatment. And at the end, she will, I guess, try and guess. 
The whole concept of this date was just bogus from the start. First, well, I for, mean, after Mikkel and them had to hammer nails. That's exactly, that's the first bogus thing, which is just like, hey, do manual labor? Okay, you didn't do good enough. Go the fuck home. To like, hey, touch up ons. Touch up ons. Just nonstop, just touch up ons. It's great. Good stuff. Not only that, the being blindfolded and having people like touch your feet. Go fuck off. No way. Zero percent chance. Well, when you get a massage, don't you close your eyes? What's yes, but I get to see the face of the person who's going to do. It's a completely different. It's a totally different spiel. I don't know that it is. You know, I guess it's not that different. Yeah. Except when I get a massage, ain't nobody sucking my toes. Well, no, there's ain't no- nobody <laughs> sucking these toes. <laughs> Nick Griffin's new catchphrase. I mean, nobody's sucking the, uh, these toes. It's just sweet tooth is catchphrase one. Second catchphrase. Um, Ain't nobody sucking these toes. Drew kicks us off with a massage. Drew gets the massage. Uh, and she's real chatty throughout. Uh, she warns him to be careful of the side boob. And at first, the massage is kind of rough, but then it becomes something better. He climbs up on, which is like, if I was blindfolded again, I would say, a no thank you. Yeah, it's, they play this gross music throughout to suggest when things are getting more sexual, and it's just, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, because you know when it's getting sexual, because the boys do overtly weird sexual things. And then even more than that, when each treatment is over, the guys have to come out to a room of waiting bros and be like, yeah, I went okay. What kind of stuff did you get to do? Yeah. How'd your thing go? Like, it's uncomfortable. Uh, And so the massage goes pretty well. And then Benoit gets the manicure. Benoit is given an assortment of vibrating tools, like nail files and buffers and stuff, which I've gotten many manicures. They're never using, like, battery powered implements well I'm, i imagine he needs the help i don't think he's a licensed i guess that's true manicurist uh and so he he uses the tools on the nails then he goes into a hand and arm massage uh and he tells us that he is making it as sexual as he can very very sexual and then he uh just no, no big deal sucks on one of her fingers not even a big <laughs> deal just like you've got oh you got a little peanut butter on there no oh. <laughs> and she immediately starts laughing, and she's like, "That's oh, Benoit." That's okay, definitely Benoit. Um, and what the my favorite part of this is when Benoit comes out of the room. Drew literally says, so "How's your thing?" And he just kind of giggles and says, "I licked one of her fingers." And Drew's reaction was actually really good. <laughs> yeah, he just starts laughing. Uh, but it, wholly inappropriate. Ja- I mean, Jasmine laughs laughs it off, but like, are you if that if I was blindfolded and somebody pulled all my digits in their mouth hole? What if you were, if you were the bachelor and you'd met all these women before and there's the assumption that you'd gotten rid of the ones that made you really uncomfortable. I mean, this is just, this is just somebody you're dating, putting a finger in their mouth. No, see, (laughs) even you realized at the end of that sentence. I know. I remembered who you were and how that would make you feel. And then the, the worst part was the betrayal of Kevin W., Captain Canada, who gave her a foot massage and she se- she said that like she was talking throughout the other treatments, but during this one she couldn't because she was just in this ocean of ecstasy. Uh, how good this foot massage was! And Kevin's like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's just she's moaning and biting her lips. Seems like she liked it. It's like, all right, kind of some sexy stuff happening here. When he ends, he like pets her on the foot, just leans in real quick, kisses that foot, walks away, and he does a th- he he pauses for like a half second after he kisses that foot, and I feel like in that moment he realizes is like. Mm, that was a super fucking creepy thing to do. <laughs> well, it's hard to signal because they're not supposed to talk. They're supposed to stay silent. So it's hard to signal like, and now I'm finished. And like Drew kind of just as like a little back pat. Yeah. But, but the other guys hey, are like. Hey, Drew, well done. Much better. <laughs> Good instincts, dog. What can I put her whole back in my mouth? <laughs> I'm going to put my mouth all on your neck i'm gonna encompass it like a boa constrictor uh yeah so this date was probably the grossest date i'd seen in a while in a good long time um jasmine seems to take it like jasmine seems to like find it uh like funny or in in kevin's case like kind of hot 
Um, maybe not the foot kiss thing. That was abysmal. Uh, but yeah, just a really sort of as a view. I felt like I was spectating something I should not be spectating. Yeah, yeah. No, it it was really uncomfortable, and the music didn't help. The kind of well, like yeah. like a suggestive music in the background. Uh, so after it's over, of course, there is more champagne because there's always champagne on these dates. Big bottle, grown up bottles of champagne, not the kid bottles I drink <laughs> out of. Uh, everybody's in robes and they get in a hot tub together and she just immediately guesses all three dudes and what service they performed. It's a pretty easy one, right? Like, Benoit, you put your fucking mouth on my finger. Yeah. Kevin, your grip was strong like the Hulk's grip. Drew, your massage Drew, wasn't very great. Drew, you're the other was. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so Benoit pulls her away first and he talks about his family's chalet. Uh, and then they start kissing, and she just can't stop laughing, because he still has it toned way up, um, and she really wants him to dial it back. Like, every kiss he gives her, he kisses her like, I don't know, like the boat is going down, <laughs> and she, she does not enjoy it. Yeah, it's bad. it's bad to see. A lot of just meat. Just a lot of mouth meat. It's one of those moments as the viewer where you're like, they're not going to end up together. But no. I guess I'm watching another week with the yeah. two of them. Because he's fun. They have fun together. I will say that. Like, she seems to have more fun with him than she does with some of the other guys. he also needs to tone the fuck down. Because if she's like, hey, 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 stop putting your fucking tongue in my mouth. Yeah. Then stop doing that, dog. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that it feels less about her and more about Benoit's just intense passion for everyone and everything. Yeah. Uh, and then Drew pulls her away. And this whole moment is supposed to be about him kind of alleviating her doubt from last week where she's like, got word that he was not a good guy. And so she still kind of needs to make sure. I literally, this is weird because I watched this whole episode very intently. I don't like I just phased out at this part when he was like talking about Chris. I literally got tunnel vision and I wasn't doing anything. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was endeavoring to like not look at my phone and like get distracted by my phone. I was like really intently watching the TV show, but I realized like a minute had passed and I didn't I didn't like pick up anything they yeah said i here. know they were talking and once they finished i looked over at griffin and i was like did anything just happen it was really weird you and i just and I, <laughs> I i think it's just because we've watched so much of this show and we're just so over this shit yeah that it just was static but then i kind of tuned back in because jasmine's trying to figure out what drew's all about and so she says quote i know you're all let's do lunch and really quote, fucking funny which i thought and was a good way so to, put to the him. point uh, but she wants to know kind of the other side of him. And then he starts talking about how he just bought a house and he has a dog. And an and apple tree. He planted an apple tree. And then like transitions right into how much he loves his mom. It just, it's like, I was telling Griffin, it's like he read a book right before he came on the show of like list of things girls like. Yeah. And like on that list was like dog, apple, apple tree. <laughs> yeah. Mom. Uh, apples, apples <laughs> and also like sustainability. Yeah. Um, and then he says that he quote hasn't kissed those lips yet. That's the thing. He went on a run here, or is like, you know, maybe this guy's not so bad. Maybe he just like is plays a villain on TV and was kind of forced into the role without much like good setup. And he just has like the one stick and he does it. But like in real life, it's not that bad. He has an interaction with I think Benoit in the hot tub where they like cheers and it seems like they're just like having a nice time. Uh, and then he's like, mm, I haven't kissed those lips yet. And Jasmine kind of makes fun of him. He's like, like, I knew he, when he was going to kiss me, he was going to say something like, mm, got to get those lips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, he's just that kind of guy. And it doesn't bother Jasmine. Like that he's just kind of thinks he has more game than he does. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't think he's, like, the villain to end all villains, clearly. I, I, I think there'll probably, based on the preview for next week's episode, there'll probably be more of it. It's like, yeah, he's not, he's not 
I don't even think he's that villainous. I think he's like plays up the D bag role because that's the role that's kind of yeah. He thinks that he's smoother show. than he is. He thinks he's funnier than he is, you know. And and he keeps putting himself in situations that he thinks are really. I don't, I don't even hold the th- the like him doing constant gag thing against him because I feel like that is like a weird thing of Bachelorette Canada where the producers are like, go do a clown act. <laughs> you know, we haven't had in a minute a good clowning act. <laughs> I don't want to. Can I just go in and read the date card? Yeah. Make sure you make a big fart first. <laughs> Maybe there's a banana peel on the ground oh, and no. you slip on it. You slip it. on them and you stand up. Your boner's hanging out. <laughs> oh, it's Canada. We can show boners on TV. Griffin. They can. That's not true. It's totally true. Watch Kids in the Hall. Okay. It's the boner zone. <laughs> That was the original name for the show. What happens next? Um, so after both Drew and Benoit have pulled her away, we cut to Captain Canada, who is jealous in the hot tub, and he doesn't pull Jasmine away. He just sits there. It's very cold to her. And Kev, you blew it, dude, because she was so, like, she was talking about after the day, like, the foot How massage was the best part. How great that foot massage was. It was really, really sexy, and I want to hit up whoever did that. And then Kevin did not pull her aside. And so when it was rose slinging time. Yeah, she, she gave Drew the rose because he was kind of the only one that didn't didn't totally fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> um, And then the date's over. And we're back at the house. And the guys are all sitting around. And Drew has to do his little victory lap because he got the rose. So he comes in in boxers with roses on them and just a black blazer and nothing else. And just kind of struts He's in. Got a bottle of champagne. With his champagne. And to his, to, in his defense, there's at least four men in this room who see this very basic costume prop comedy. <laughs> and they're all like... <laughs> Chris is super annoyed, though. Yeah. Chris is like, why is everybody celebrating this man? <laughs> then it is time for the cocktail party. And we find out that Drew is in typical form since he already has a rose, has decided to get drunk. Which, you know, no big deal. They don't ever make a big deal out of it. He just is like, no, and he doesn't get drunk. He also doesn't get, um, he doesn't get bachelorette drunk. Yeah. He just like has had too much to drink, but he doesn't, like, throw a glass and, like, jump in the pool and fight somebody. Uh, Mikkel is the first to pull her away again, as is his custom. And he says kind of endearingly that he gets shy in front of the cameras, and she's like, you have to cut that out. She says that's annoying. Stop yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then he gives this really sincere speech about how he wants to be there, and he can't imagine being anywhere else, and he gets excited about thinking they're about their relationship together and then there's some more kissing and then he says he's he's coming in at full speed just to let her know rachel brought up what if the final two is mikhail and mike Ooh boy howdy that's a strong duo just like a couple of good guys i don't know that there's ever been a finale where i liked both of the finalists so much that i couldn't like decide between them yeah usually it's like one that seems to have more chemistry and one that's kind of bland but safe yes uh and in this case I mean, to be honest, they're both a little bland, Mikel and Mike. I guess so. But um, but really, like, honestly, good guys. Like, guys that I would want to And Mike like. can do that really cool thing with his mouth bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that, too. Which is important in a relationship. Yeah. Um, Griffin can't, though, so I don't... I guess what, what Griffin can do... Um, it's getting is, better. Yeah. It's a really, a really good Jack Nicholson impression. Hey, it's me, Jack Nicholson. I can't do the mouth thing, but that's okay because I was in the thin blue, thin red line. One of the lines. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the red badge of courage. I, 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 I was in into the, I was in into the blue. It's me and Jessica Alba were diving for ocean treasure and into the blue. I was in the band Deep Blue Something. I was in Deep Blue Something. <laughs> 99 Red Balloons. That was me, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, while Mikel is talking to Jasmine, Chris starts 
making clear to everybody that his plans are to to kiss Jasmine tonight. And so when Kevin, the deckhand, pulls Jasmine aside, he starts saying, like, I'm going in next, guys. Uh, and he says, like, oh, Jasmine's got beautiful lips, and I'm going to kiss her tonight. Um, By the way, if the TV show ever sets it up this much, you know that it go- is going to be bad. Yeah. Our, it's going to be a bad smooch. Our alarm bell started going off right away. I actually, during this scene, Rachel can attest to this, I had to stand up. And I just kind of followed where my skeleton was going because it's so exhausting to let my skeleton just like have field trips outside of my body as much as it does watching this show. And so I just kind of like coasted with it just to see where it goes. And it actually, there's like a like a, <laughs> a, a column, a support column, uh, like sort of in our kitchen area that I just kind of stood and hid behind. <laughs> yeah. And I just kind of watched the TV with just my just my left eye. If I'm able to keep Griffin on the couch, which sometimes I am, we have to be looking at each other the whole time. We that can't watch at least once. We can't watch what's on TV. That's what we did during the song. That's, yeah, that's oh, what we did song. during Thomas's song. We just looked directly at each other. <laughs> um, so Chris comes in and says, "I want to give you two things." That's a bad start. We both know what the second thing's going to yeah, be. Yeah, <laughs> whatever the first thing's going to be, better be like an apology <laughs> for the second thing that's to come. Uh, so the first thing is she had asked him to write down the lyrics from their reggae recording moment. Uh, and so he does that and she's like, Oh, thank you so much. And he's telling us the viewer like, Oh yeah, you know, there's, there's a moment where she's kind of holding my gaze and we're looking at each other. And then he says, the second thing is this. And then he starts to lean in for the kiss. And she's just like, no. She shuts it down. No, no, no. Good on him, at least for warning her that that was about to happen. Giving her the time that she needed to preempt it. Well, and she says, and this is probably the most reasonable thing a bachelorette has ever said. She's like, just because he was advancing, I didn't want to just do it if i wasn't feeling it. yeah dog of course yeah which is like is the most logical thing ever she's just like i don't feel like we're there yet i don't feel like we've progressed to that point i don't want to force it and what griffin and i are hearing is her say like we're just not this isn't going i'm not going to do this with you we're not gonna date are you kidding me but chris hears it as oh she must want to get to know me more she says, we're not there yet. And the yet, he latches onto yeah. and thinks like, well, the yet means like there will be a point after she gets to know me over the next couple of weeks where we will eventually have a kiss. And it's like, no, bud. If she turns away a kiss at the cocktail party right before the yeah, rose right ceremony, before the rose you're going ceremony. the fuck home. I Go know. get in the cab, dog. I know. It, it was crazy that A, she didn't just send him home there and then. B, it was crazy that Chris wasn't like, well, I'll be on my way. Yeah. I mean, you know how it is when you like somebody and you're just kind of hanging on to whatever little little niblets they'll give you. This wasn't even is that a niblet. Just me? Is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> this was you coming and saying, can I please have a niblet? And them saying, no. No niblets for you. You will have no niblets. I've given niblets to other people, but and, I will not give them to you. you say, how about I just give you a niblet? And she says, I don't even want that niblet. Go home. <laughs> Run home, Jack. It's over. You lost the game. Instead, yeah. we have to go to this rose ceremony yeah. where, spoiler alert, Chris goes home. Yeah, at the rose ceremony, I will point out that uh, Kevin of Captain Canada uh, nickname is wearing a bow tie. And I didn't think it was flattering. Drag him, baby. Get him. <laughs> Serve <Served his country. laughs> No big deal. Rachel's going to smash you on that neck situation he's a man with a very large frame dedicated his country served his country for many years yeah dude i agree with you so many hardships just come after him get him mikhail in a bow tie would be great maybe deckhand kevin in a bow tie would be good but not captain canada but not big muscular kevin it has to be at one of those big old paula poundstone bow ties because you got those broad shoulders Paula Poundstone never wore bow ties. She probably did. Neckties. Well, she probably wore bow ties sometimes. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we'll see. I, I mean, yeah, the first thing I'm doing as soon as we press <laughs> that stop button is getting on YouTube. I'm going to watch everything she's ever done. 
Uh, so Captain Canada gets a rose. Um, so does Mikel. So does Deckhand Kevin. So does Benoit. Which means Chris is going home. Sorry, Chris. Chris is very, very sad. Um, and he kind of gives the speech, you know, that you hear a lot on this show. Of from like, him. From him. Like, that, I'm sorry. I can't with you, Chris, anymore. Because you're a, like a strapping lad who's a good looking strapping lad. I know. Who uh, is. He's going to be fine. We're not worried about you, Chris. I know he's going to be fine. That's what drives me crazy is the whole time he's like. This just keeps happening. People just don't love me. Fuck off. Like, you're a good-looking dude. Griffin McElroy, have you ever gotten dumped and thought, like, well, this must be indicative of the rest of my life? Sure. That's not what this was, though. It was a TV show. He got kicked out. He lost the TV show, and I'm sure he was very, very sad about that. I was just talking about how in every episode, it was just a sad sack. Like, it reminded me of... Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I can't remember his name because it's the name of the famous music, James Taylor from last season. It's just like, all these other boys are so great, oh, and this yeah. always happens to me. Yeah. By the way, public apology, last last episode I said I couldn't remember any nice boys. I do, I was the Wells, heat of the moment. Wells, of course, Wells, Wells. of course I remember Wells. Yeah. James Taylor was okay, too. Yeah, so Chris goes home, and he's pretty sad about it, but I think he will find a, a nice woman that has similar interests to him and will yes. be delighted by his inventions. And then we find out his bombs. And then we find out uh, <laughs> they're going to Morocco. They're going to Morocco. And in the preview for the next week, we just see some more Drew stuff, which there's is... There's some camels. Yes. But there's a lot of Drew stuff. But it's other boys fighting with Drew, and it's like, that's, a, I guess, a little bit better... Um, but I'm glad the Drew Chris thing has been put to bed. Yeah, now it'll be Drew and somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was this episode of Bachelorette Canada. I um, want to thank some people for gifts. Yeah, let's thank some people for gifts. So we got an, a nice little embroidered rose in a frame that says, when you're ready. That was really good. Uh, and thank you to Susan for sending us that. Thank that you, really Susan. Nice. Uh, that's P.O. Box 66639, Austin, Texas, 78766. If you want to send us anything. We've gotten so many onesies. Oh, I can't. Why did? Why are you doing this, leaning down to the floor to grab <laughs> shit? Uh, well, we got a really nice onesie um, that says, I'm a critical hit and has 20s all over it. That that's is a reference. For those of you that are just Rose Buddies fans, and I know that's got to be, what, like 97% of you. <laughs> You're goofing. You're goofing. There are a lot. I would actually be really curious to know. I think there's a lot of people who listen to Rose Buddies who don't listen to any of the other Mac uh, shows. Griffin also does a show called The Adventure Zone, where he plays Dungeons and Dragons with his brothers and dad. And so there's a little 20 sided die on there. Yeah, it's really cute. Uh, We've and then we got a, so really, a really nice note uh, from Amy T. Um,. And I really appreciated it, just telling us to kind of enjoy this this terrifying time where we're about to have a child. Yeah, it's already <laughs> it's already getting there, Amy. Yeah, we are we are eight weeks out from the due date. We have not talked yet about how we might handle our maternity leave. Oh, oh, I'll spoil it for the listeners at home. <laughs> You're not going to get episodes for a while, probably. We'll see. I can't imagine it's going to be our highest priority. Maybe we'll just we'll take questions or something. Maybe. I mean, the good news is it'll be December, so there's not going to be anything on then, I guess. Yeah. Like, maybe, uh, obviously, we probably won't have time to watch show, and I won't want to take furious notes, but maybe we'll take questions from the listeners yeah, or we'll, something. Yeah, we'll, we'll find some or way put to up keep little, the dream little alive. Or put up 15-minute yeah. episodes. Uh, that's December 5th is our due date, just to let you all in on the magic <laughs> uh, that's it for this episode thank you all for listening uh, until next time I'm Griffin McElroy I'm Rachel McElroy when you're ready Rose. stay with us on this journey of joy spoiler alert she ends up with soldier boy right